As a former NFL safety, Doug Middleton was his team's last line of defense. Yeah, and today his goal isn't to stop touchdowns, is to end America's mental health crisis. Doug made this mission a very passionate one after the shocking suicide of his best friend. When I heard that, I was in shock. Like, I just, I just couldn't believe it because it's like I just talked to my best friend the day before. Like, you know, there's no way that he, he took his own life. From 2016 to 2021, Doug Middleton lived his dream of playing in the NFL. His love of football began as a six-year-old growing up in North Carolina. For Doug, life was all about football and friends. As a six-year-old kid, there was nothing that could compare to scoring touchdowns with your friends or making interceptions or, or making tackles. There was nothing in life that was, that was like that. One friend in particular was like family. Me and AJ played ball together um, all the way from, from pretty much eight years old all the way through high school. Our friendship really just started with just, just two young kids trying to play sports together. Doug and AJ were star athletes and both accepted football scholarships. AJ at Fayetteville State and Doug at Appalachian State University. During those times, we took two different paths, but at the same time, we remained very close and, and uh, we shared in each other's journey as we tried to figure out life. In 2011, Doug's freshman year, he gave his life to Jesus. I was able to put my faith in Jesus Christ and, and Christianity, and uh, that's what ended up changing my life because no matter how things have gone, you know, whether they go south or whether they go right, um, I know that at the end of the day, um, it may not be my plan, but it's gonna be God's plan. Doug excelled at App State. As a junior, he was named to the all-conference team, and in 2016, he signed with the New York Jets. Unfortunately, as Doug was thriving, AJ was struggling. Once AJ got done at Fayetteville State, that's when a lot of the adversity started to really happen in his life and, and uh, when those experiences really started to alter um, you know, his view on life and uh, he just uh, slipped into a deep state of depression and, and really couldn't get out of it. Uh, he didn't want to take a shower. He didn't want to go eat. He didn't want to leave the house. In July 2017, Doug received a call that changed his life. My wife was with, was with me, and uh, we got a call from uh, my dad. He didn't call my phone, he called her phone, and um, he had let her know that um, AJ had just took his own life. When I heard that, I was in shock. You know, I sat there for a few hours, and then uh, it started to really hit me, and I started to cry. Still mourning, Doug headed to training camp with the Jets. During the first preseason game, he suffered a season-ending injury. It was as if life just really hit me because now um, I had lost a game that I love. I lost pretty much my brother who, who I've, I've overcome any and everything with and, and been through any and everything with. Um, both of my outlets were gone and, and it all happened within one month. And so I really, uh, you know, struggled trying to find my identity, you know, what my identity was outside the game of football. Doug met a couple who lost their son to suicide. They encouraged him to use his story to help others. They said, man, listen, you, you have a, a true story. You can help a lot of people. You have a platform. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I think, I think, I think AJ didn't die for, for, for any reason. I think he died so that you can help a lot of people. And when I heard that from that couple, um, I felt a huge sense of responsibility. And uh, it wasn't something that I was intimidated by, but something I, that I definitely welcomed. In 2017, Doug started the Dream the Impossible Foundation, bringing awareness to mental health and suicide prevention. For me, uh, the pain of losing my best friend has flipped my life upside down and really turned him to my purpose. Today, Doug dedicates his purpose to AJ's memory. That purpose is his passion helping others and fulfilling God's plan in his life. It's a true blessing. And, and I think it's a true testament to my obedience to God and, and being able to step in the purpose that he has for me, not really with football, but really off the field. And I think that's why I've, I've been able to continue this journey so much and continue to speak faith in other people's life is because I listened to those directions that that, that couple gave me when they told me that I, you know, I, I have a duty to help other people. And I've accepted that.
I've accepted that role. I've accepted the, you know, being able to tell my story and, and, and being able to, to speak for others who can't speak for themselves. I just want to help others heal and I want to be able to inspire others through my journey and, and through my passion for life. I want people to look at my life and say that, that God had a hand on my life and that um, through his journey, I know that God can take me through whatever I'm going through. Charlene, one of the things about Doug I so admire is he, he's still lamenting and grieving yeah, the loss. Yeah, you can hear it, yeah. Yet he said, you know, I'm going to find purpose in this. Yeah. He said, I feel this responsibility, but he wasn't running from it. Like yeah. he felt it was God putting it on his heart and he's moving forward. I mean, you know, for a while his identity was probably I'm a professional yeah. football, football player, player right? Yeah. But the injury kind of transitioned him into yeah. a different mission now. Yeah. I think it's really amazing to see his testimony and the fact that he had a choice. He could have chosen to sulk and to go away and just focus on his pain. But instead, he made the decision to take the couple um, yeah. upon the words that they gave him to use your pain for a higher purpose. Yeah, otherwise, two lives are taken, you know, exactly. even if he's still living. He yeah. made a wonderful decision to say, you know what, I'm going to deny myself and help others through my pain. And that's what God often um, does with our lives. Mm -hmm. He wants us to use the pains that we're going through in our lives, you know, to help someone else. It's not just yeah. about what we're going through, but what have I gone through that could help um, someone else? The purpose.